Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with natural log. We have e to the power x plus ln x equals square root of e divided by 2, and we're going to be solving for x values. We're going to be looking at a couple different things, such as the derivative of a function. We'll make a table, and then eventually we're going to be taking a look at a graph and some other things. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's get started. First method. Now, since I have an equation that has uh, e at the base, and I have square root of e on the right-hand side, and ln x in the exponent, all good, let's natural log both sides. ln e to the power x plus ln x equals ln square root of e divided by 2. We're going to be using properties of logs here, so make sure you are familiar with them. First rule is the power rule. When there is the log of a power, then we can go ahead and move that exponent to the front. So we can write this as x plus ln x multiplied by ln e, which is 1. That's what's nice about uh, lning both sides here. And then on the right-hand side, we have a quotient. So we can basically use the quotient rule and turn this into a difference. Now, square root of e can be written as e to the power 1 half, and ln e, again, is 1, so this is going to be minus 1. Obviously, it's not a product, so we can totally get rid of it. It's just being subtracted, and we still have x plus ln x on the left-hand side. So we're going to try to manipulate the right-hand side so that we can compare, you know, one-to-one -one correspond. We can kind of establish a one-to-one -one correspondence, okay? That's what I'm going to do. So we have this one-half power again, so let's go ahead and move that. x plus ln x equals one-half ln e minus, okay, that is a mistake here. This is not supposed to be ln e, that's supposed to be ln 2. Okay, there you go. ln 2, and this is ln 2, and this is going to be ln 2 again. Now, ln e is 1 again, so we can write this as 1 half minus ln 2, which is equal to x plus ln x. We're almost there except for the plus minus difference. So how do you turn that minus sign into a plus sign, right? And that can be, actually be done easily by considering the following. We can write that as 1 half plus negative 1 times ln 2. And then what we're going to do next is move this power back. Obviously, those properties work both ways as long as we stay within the domain. You know, you can basically go back and forth. So now we have x plus ln x equals 1 half plus. As you see here, it's going to be ln 2 to the power negative 1, but it's just ln one half and this is just awesome don't you think because now we have a one-to-one -one correspondence take a look at this and if you didn't see it take a good look because what you're about to see is actually amazing i know a lot of times we take these things for granted but notice that x equals one half works right so great so x equals one half is a solution i'm not saying that's the only solution and that's actually the the question that I'm going to raise here, are there any other solutions? So we're going to try to answer that by using a little bit of calculus. We're going to look at a graph and some other things. Okay, ready? So let's go ahead and uh, set f of x equal to x plus ln x. So what kind of function are we dealing with? Now, if you're graphing a function, definitely you can use something like a graphing tool like a Desmos or what was the other one? GeoGebra, which is not something that I use, but I like Desmos better. Anyways, this video is not being promoted by Desmos, by the way. Anyways, I just use it, as you know. And um, But uh, instead of using a graphing tool, it actually makes more sense and it's more uh, informative. Uh, you learn more by looking at how the function behaves. So we're going to look at the behavior of the function. As x approaches infinity, what happens as x approaches? Zero from the right, from the left, so on and so forth. But I'm going to look at the first derivative here, uh, which is basically 1 plus 1 over x. It's a sum, so you just differentiate it. And then, uh, most of the time, we try to set it equal to 0, right? If you set this equal to 0, you're going to get x equals negative 1. So that seems to be a critical point for this function, which may mean uh, a function has a horizontal tangent, a maximum or a minimum at that point. But as you'll see, uh, this is a little problematic. So instead of setting it equal to zero, let's go ahead and see 
where this derivative is going to be positive because I want to know where the function is increasing. And if the first derivative is positive, that means our function is increasing on that interval. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, so we're going to solve an inequality, but never ever, you know, just put x's on one side and then the cross multiply. Keep everything on the same side and keep the zero on the other side. So from here, we're going to get x plus 1 divided by x is greater than 0. So we should have 0 on one side. And then we'll make a table. And when we do make that table, we're going to have a row for x, we're going to have a row for f prime, and we're going to have a row for f. What are the uh, critical points in negative 1 and 0? As you can see from here, this one and this one. And then uh, we're just going to put a little 0, meaning that those are 0. Even though x equals 0 makes it undefined, it's still where the sign might be changing. So if you look at this carefully, you're going to notice that for x values that are greater than 0, both of these are going to be positive. So you have a plus sign, and then you'll have a minus sign, and then you'll have a plus sign, which kind of indicates that our function increases and then decreases and then increases. So based on this table, we have a minimum and a maximum, but that's not true. The problem is with the natural log. So you got to be very careful. That's why I said you have to stay within the domain. So whenever you have something like ln x or log x, then x must be positive. Otherwise, this is not well defined for reals. We're talking about a real ln here. We're not getting into complex numbers, okay? We're keeping it real. So anything less than or equal to zero is gone. So we don't really have to worry about this part of the graph. We can totally scratch the table and just focus on x values that are greater than zero, which means that our function is always going to be increasing. And that's actually amazing. If you graph this on Desmos, it'll show you that you'll see that it's always increasing. Make sense? So ln x requires x is greater than zero and f is increasing on f is increasing on 0 to infinity and that's what matters which means we're going to have a single solution and we already found it didn't we we said that x equals one half works and it's good great so let's go ahead and take a look at the second solution and then we'll look at the graph and a couple other things actually one more thing that's important anyways the second method basically takes the original equation and just works off of that. No logging both sides, okay? Let's go ahead and um, split this into a product because that's when we add the exponents. And let's go ahead and write this as square root of e can probably be written as e to the power 1 half divided by 2. And that can be written as 1 half times e to the power 1 half. That's what we want to get. We want to get a product because we have a product here on the left hand side. Look at that. And what is e to the power ln x? Of course, x needs to be positive. Needless to say, this is x, all right? By definition, because those are inverse functions. So x e to the x equals 1 half e to the power 1 half. Now, if you look at the function f of x equals x e to the x, you're going to realize that actually, by the way, the first value that we found with the first method negative 1 did not work because that's not in the domain. But this time, it's, things are a little different. Because if you differentiate this function, you're also going to notice that x equals negative 1 is a critical point, And we do have something at that point. OK? It's going to work. But what does this tell you? If it says Lambert's w, you're right. Yes, that's what it is. So we're going to Lambert both sides or w both sides. And as you know, by definition, if you w x e to the x, you get x. So if you're that's your input and if your input is one half e to the power one half that's just going to be one half right that's the definition it's the inverse function for x e to the x therefore the solution is x equals one half why is that the only solution let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and you'll see why all right so we're going to be looking at the graph of x e to the x because it's, it's nice notice that we have a minimum at negative one therefore our function is decreasing and then increasing now, here's what happens. Our y value here, which is square root of e over 2, is 0 0.82 something, which is greater than this y value here, which I marked as negative 1 over e. As you can see, that's a negative value. Our, our y value is greater because if you have anything between those two y values, right, then the horizontal line is going to intersect the graph at two points, which means we're going to have 
two solutions. That's why there are two branches of Lambert's W function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.